This video continues uh, what we've been learning in the past JavaScript videos. The last video we had was called Methods, and we had a class that uh, looked as follow. First of all, we had the HTML file. All we had on it was a button that said, if you ever click on the button, we go to Run Class. We find that function somewhere. And then we have a class called Person with two attributes, first name and last name. And remember, it's your responsibility to make sure you determine the type of those variables since JavaScript is a loosely typed language. We had some methods. We had one called getFullName that returned the concatenation of the last name with the comma and a first name. GetFirstLetter, which said go to the attribute last name in the object that you're working with for the class and grab the first character at position zero. We had the setFullName method, which received two parameters assign the first parameter to the object's first name attribute and the second parameter to the object's last name attribute. And remember, these names do not have to be the same. They could, but you're all right as long as you use the keyword this. The word this identifies that you're working with an object. Otherwise, it would assume that you're working with one of these parameters. Then we had some getters, a getter for first name and a getter for last name. And I added this one since the last video. We had the setter for the first name, which received a value and assigned it to the attribute. And I added this setter for last name. Do we really need these gets and sets? No, because the variables are public and you can just access them by using the object.first name and object.last name. And which is what we did before over here, before we actually called the set full name method, which says take the, this value and this value and pass them into these two parameters and then assign them to those attributes and then we displayed information and this is where we left off. Remember that we created the object by saying we declared a variable and saying new which says create an object and then you specify the name of the class parenthesis parenthesis. So let's try to figure out what this part actually means. When you see the name of the class and a parenthesis parenthesis that implies you're working with a method but it's a special method remember the parenthesis parenthesis says you're working with some method in a class or it could be a function but if you're working with classes it's a method and if it's the same name as the class you see there's the name person and here's the class person then that's a special method that's called a constructor and the whole job of the constructor is to create an object from that class. Now, if you go and take a look at the source code that you wrote, we did not create a method called person anywhere. I don't see any method in here called person. And that is still working, though, because by default, JavaScript says if you have a class and you don't create a special method with the same name of the class and a parenthesis parenthesis, then it creates one for you behind the scenes and you don't see it and it's called a constructor and that's what you call whenever you want to create a new object you say new class name parenthesis parenthesis and it's calling a constructor so let's say we wanted to write our own constructor and we could pass data to it so what we could do is come up here and anywhere in this class we could type in of the word constructor parenthesis and let's just do this for right now alert I have been called so we created a brand new method notice the method is different when I even when I put my cursor on it it shows that it's different that's just a method this is a constructor and it says that whenever you're called or whenever you create a brand new object by saying new constructor it will try to find that method up here and execute it in this case we're just going to do an alert box so let's actually go and run that and see in the debugger if I hit that new statement if we see the word I have been called being displayed so the first thing you need to do is I had changed some code Make sure your function is called run class because that's what we said we were calling right here. 
So let's go ahead and run this now and see what happens. And here's the program and if we click click me it says I have been called and that's because we created that brand new object and then it goes through the next two alerts. So it looks like when we said new person it came up here and said hey we need to call the constructor and let's do something there. Now what could you do in the constructor? The constructor is a great place for you to initialize attributes for the object or to make sure other things are actually happening. So let's come back into our program and let's do something now. Right here we said create the object by calling the new constructor which that had our alert in it and then we said let's go ahead and set the full name. Well let's do something different. Instead of having that set full name I'm going to wipe that line out we're just going to say call the constructor and pass it two values. What I can now do is up here I'm going to say that my constructor receives two values and then down here we're going to say go ahead and take that first value and assign it to the attribute take the second value and assign it to the attribute these are ordinal, meaning that as you pass parameters to these, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize this code so maybe you can see more on the screen at one shot. When you pass Mickey, since it's in the first position, it will go to the first position of the parameter. Mouse will go into the second position of the parameter. So let's go ahead and run this one more time and see if when we create the new object we pass Mickey and Mouse to it and so if you did call these other methods that data really shows up. So let's run it, click me and it shows Mouse and Mickey and the first name, first letter M. So that now says that when you create a brand new object instead of doing a default constructor which just said no parameters are being passed to it, we could actually pass parameters to it. Now what happens if we don't pass all the parameters? Let's just pass one parameter and see what happens. Let's run it one more time. It says undefined and Mickey. So this is different from other languages whereas other languages if you didn't have all the data going to a method you'd get an error. JavaScript says it's okay, no big deal. Because JavaScript does not allow you to do this and have multiple constructors. We already have one constructor declared, so we can't create another constructor called overloading. You can't do that. So it's just very flexible with the parameters that you pass it. So when would you use a constructor? You'd write your own constructor if you wanted to pass it data. Now we could do another thing too. We could just say this. Let's say that um, let's go ahead and pass it. Well, let's leave that. We'll pass it that. Let's add another attribute and we'll call it state abbreviation. And right here we're going to say that for every object you create the state abbreviation will be Utah. So that now says every time we create a brand new object over here the first name will be whatever we pass it, the last name will be whatever we pass it, but all of the other objects will have this initialized to Utah. So that's another thing you can use constructors for. Constructors are used for creating objects. You can write your own constructor if you want. You can pass data to your constructor. You can initialize things in your constructor. It's a way for you to make sure things get set up in an object.